Each week, I host one or two forums in the district on topics vital to your life. Here is a tape of one of those forums. I, I really applaud uh, Senator Hannon for uh, having such an abiding interest in health in general, being a great supporter of our hospital, uh, Winthrop, uh, over the years, and, and particularly his interest in Lyme disease, which uh, is uh, uh, a major concern on Long Island, uh, uh, for sure. So uh, you, uh, the re residents of his district have a great champion for health uh, in Senator Hannon, and, and it's an honor to have been invited back after uh, uh, speaking last year. So what I plan to do tonight is to give you an overview, like I did last year, for, if, if anyone uh, attended, and, and to have a Q&A session. Last year, I wasn't able to have slides for some reason, PowerPoint, so this year we'll have a few pictures. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about Lyme disease, uh, we'll talk about ticks, and we'll talk about how to prevent getting Lyme disease, because really, uh, that's, that's the best thing if you can prevent getting Lyme disease. So there are three primary tick species uh, and all of them uh, uh, can be found on Long Island. Uh, you can see here the, uh, the, the tick that carries Lyme disease is the deer tick. That's this one here. Uh, this is another tick called a lone star tick and this is a dog tick. So anyone who's had dogs knows knows what knows what a dog tick is, and uh, uh, the the deer tick is the is the smallest of those. So tick species ticks have a two year life cycle. So in, in, at the beginning in spring, uh, a the female lays eggs, uh, the larvae hatch, and then feed on small small mammals. Typically, those would be mice. Uh, those, would be, uh, those would be field mice. Uh, they feed on, on, on the mice. Uh, and then the larvae will then uh, molt. They'll become what, what are called nymphs. Uh, and then the nymphs, in the, in the first year of this cycle, they, they overwinter. They lie dormant uh, through the winter. And then spring comes, uh, and, and then they, they reactivate. Uh, they then, the nymphs will attach and feed on small mammals and birds, so particularly on, uh, on mice again. So uh, for all intents and purposes, it's the, it's the small rodents that, that we have in the suburbs, uh, out in the fields, and, and particularly in, uh, in, in, uh, in forested areas. And then uh, in, in, the, in the fall, uh, the adults ta attach, the adults will attach and feed on larger mammals, mainly deer. So that's where deer come into play and that's how you hear deer always associated with Lyme disease because the adult ticks will then attach on the deer. So the deer basically then transport the, the ticks around. So the deer are the way that the, uh, that the ticks uh, get to us. Uh, the adults remain active on warm winter days and in peak activity in spring. Uh, and then again in the next spring the engorged female uh, lays eggs and adults die. So it's really in, th in, 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 in this area here, in the second summer and in the, in, in into the fall, uh, where we are most vulnerable because the ticks are plentiful and, and it's the nymphs, it's the nymphal form is the form that is the, the one that is uh, uh, most likely to attach to uh, humans when we come in contact with them. Uh, so uh, you, you, you can see here by month of the year uh, the number of deer ticks collected by life stage and you can see here in the late spring and in, into the sum, through the summer months is when the nymphs are most active, the yellow bars. Uh, the larvae then uh, later in the year in the adults uh, in, in the, in the uh, late fall, winter, and then into the next spring. This is really the, when the nymphs are most active is when we are most vulnerable. Uh, and the nymphs will then come in, attach, 
uh, take a blood meal, they'll become very engorged if anyone's ever had a bite from a tick when they've uh, attached to you a nymphal tick, you see how, how big and engorged they get with, with blood. And, and, it's, and it's the saliva, uh, for, it's the salivary glands when they attach that then can inject the, uh, the infectious agents, be it Lyme, the, the bacteria that causes Lyme disease, the parasite that causes babesiosis, uh, and the, and the uh, bacterial disease that causes, uh, the bacteria that causes ehrlichiosis. So there are really three major uh, diseases uh, that may be transmitted by the same tick. Uh, and, uh, uh, but uh, Lyme is the most common of those, but the other ones uh, may occur as well. So as I said, there are, there are, three, there are three, uh, three major diseases, Lyme disease, uh, human granulocytic an anaplasmosis, otherwise known as ehrlichiosis, and babesiosis. Uh, and, and these diseases in very unlucky individuals, may, all three may be transmitted simultaneously through one bite. And I have had the unfortunate, uh, um, uh, the, the unfortunate, uh, uh, privilege, I should say, to take care of, uh, of an individual who had all three diseases at once from one uh, tick bite. And, it, uh, and, and I can tell you it was very satisfying to get this man back on his feet, but it took months and months and months. So uh, again, when we get to the prevention part, that's really where our efforts should be, uh, uh, should be uh, based. So. Just to give you an idea of size. So here, here, this is two centimeters. So two and a half centimeters is an inch, uh, basically. And here are the sizes. So a larva is, is, is a dot, basically. It's, it's, it's nothing. You, you, very hard to see. It would be just a, just a brown dot. The nymphs are a little larger. And these are the ones that are, that are biting the most, the nymphs. So here's a larva, here's a nymph, to give you size. And then the adults, male and female, and you can see here, those are obvious to see when you, when you see them. But it's really the nymphs that, 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 that are the key. And you can see here, this is an engorged uh, uh, nymph, how big they can get. Here, here's the engorged nymph again. So here you can see this is a, this is a nymph, this is an adult, this is an engorged nymph. You can see here how bloated, and all of this is the blood meal uh, that they, they take off of, the, off of the bite. And then when they attach on, uh, they, they have these uh, mouthpieces uh, that form a firm attachment, and, and the saliva carries the infectious microorganisms then into you, into, into us. Uh, it's called Lyme disease because it was first recognized in 1975 in Lyme, Connecticut. Uh, and uh, the, the symptoms can mimic many other illnesses. It could feel like a viral illness with muscle aches, a little bit of fever. Uh, and, but ultimately, uh, it, it, it can cause end organ disease if it's not uh, taken care of rapidly. You can get uh, heart abnormalities, particularly arrhythmias, conduction abnormalities in the heart, uh, neurologic problems, uh, and musculoskeletal arthritis being, being the most famous. It's, a, it's due to a bacteria. The, the formal name is called Borrelia burgdorferi, and it's a, it's a spirochete type of bacteria. Look, see how, how it's, it's all spiral? Um, and, and, but it's a, it's a bacterium that you can you can detect. So, fortunately, many individuals who get a tick bite uh, with with an in, with a uh, with a uh, Lyme infection develop a rash called erythema migrans, and this is the 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 so-called uh, uh, bullseye rash that that uh, people. Uh, get and describe, and that's that occurs days after the tick bite. Uh, 
may, may experience fatigue, headache, stiff neck, pain or stiffness in the muscles or joints, fever, or swollen glands, like many, many other illnesses. Uh, but the, the tick bite is the key if you know that you had a tick bite. So here's some pictures. Uh, here's your deer tick again. This is the bullseye lesion. This is erythema migrans. This is the classic rash of Lyme disease. And you can see here, you have this, you have this uh, area of clearing around here. You see it's kind of paler here and outside it's more intensely red. It looks a little purple in this one, but it's more intensely inflamed. And then in the middle is the most inflammation, and that's the bullseye. And that's typically, you will often see in the middle of the bullseye, the site of the inoculation from the tick bite. You can also see multiple uh, erythema migrans. In other words, uh, multiple sites of bullseye. See all these bullseyes here? That is because this particular patient became bacteremic, meaning that the, that the Lyme bacteria got into the bloodstream and then caused these multiple bullseye. It's still early disease, it's still very treatable, but you may see more than one bullseye from a single tick bite. So it doesn't always have to be one bullseye at the site of the tick bite, it could be multiple because the uh, bacteria has now become disseminated. So as I mentioned, you can get arthritis, you can get a condition called Bell's palsy, which is, uh, which is a, a paralysis of one of the nerves that uh, uh, control the facial muscles, and that you can get, and I'll show you a picture of it, uh, you can get a, a drooping of one side of the face. Uh, it can, meningitis and cephalitis may occur. Uh, second or third degree AV block, this is a ty special type of arrhythmia that's associated with uh, with Lyme disease, sometimes it requires putting in a pacemaker temporarily in some, in some people. It can, it can be so uh, severe, but almost always uh, gets better with, with treatment and the pacemaker can come out. Arthritis uh, with swollen knee can occur because it, 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 the, the bacteria infects the synovium, the lining around the knee that provides the lubrication for the joint. And here's Bell's palsy. Uh, some of you may have, may have seen this uh, condition. It can be caused by a number of things, but Lyme disease, without another condition, Bell's palsy uh, is all in, in the right season, in the right circumstances. You have to think about Lyme disease first and foremost. And it's totally treatable. Uh, it, 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 it does go away. It takes it t may take many weeks to go away, but it, it, it does go away. And you can see here, uh, this, this woman has a, a drooping side of her face because she has paralysis of the nerve that controls this facial muscle uh, that, that uh, uh, has become paralyzed from infiltration of the nerve by the Lyme disease bacteria. Uh, this is the, an electrocardiogram showing uh, an abnormal heart rhythm associated with Lyme disease. So fortunately, as I indicated before, the rash, the bullseye rash of erythema migrans occurs in the majority of people infected. So that's a good thing uh, because we can detect it. We can see it clinically and we can treat it. Uh, as I said, it generally occurs within a few days after the bite, but it could occur up to a month. It's kind of rare that it occurs that late. It usually occurs within the first week, first several days. Uh, and uh, those who are not treated, uh, a little over half may develop arthritis several months after the bite. So arthritis would be a late uh, manifestation of Lyme disease in someone who did not get treated initially. And then uh, the, the neurological complaints, the chron the, the, a chronic uh, uh, um, a brain uh, infection may occur 
in those who, are, who, are, who have never been treated. It's very unusual to have this, uh, though, in people who have been promptly and appropriately treated. Uh, so I'd like to differentiate that from the so-called chronic Lyme disease syndromes, which are highly controversial, and I hope we don't get into that tonight, but we can if you want. Um, and uh, uh, the chronic Lyme disease syndromes are separate from this. The, these, the, these are people who never got treatment for Lyme disease, who you can demonstrate if you, if you do spinal taps and do other kinds of imaging studies, you can demonstrate uh, that there's something going on. Uh, as, as I indicated, uh, you know, if you get two or three infections from one tick, uh, it can make the Lyme disease more severe. Uh, and early antibiotic treatment is really key. Um, and uh, uh, most cases are acquired at home, uh, in the garden, uh, in the backyard. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's not something you go to some exotic place to get. Okay, so now let, let's talk about what we can do to prevent getting tick bites. So the key is to not get a tick bite. Uh, and and uh, uh, these are just, uh, you may know a lot of these, but just to remind you of some of the techniques uh, that are good to follow. Uh, wear light colored, cl colored clothing so you can spot the ticks more easily when they, when they come on you. Wear long pants when you're in, in areas where ticks can be. Uh, tuck in the pant leg into the sock and wear clo uh, closed toed shoes. So when you, you know, people are going on hikes in the country or if you're in a uh, very, uh, uh, you know, if your garden is in a very grassy area where the, where the deer are coming, you know, don't necessarily try not to go out in your shorts uh, uh, with, uh, with flip-flops on uh, to, uh, to uh, tend, your, uh, tend your plants. Uh, in, in addition, uh, use tick repellents. Uh, and uh, there are two chemicals. One is called uh, DEET and the other is called permethrin. Permethrin should be used on clothing only. DEET can be used uh, on, on, on your skin. Uh, but DEET is the main ingredient in, uh, in the, in the uh, repellents like, uh, like off, for instance. Uh, not to endorse off, but uh, 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 it's, one, it's a brand that people know. I actually use it myself at, at, at home. Uh, and, and if you're going to use it, use, use the highest concentration you find on the shelf. So in the case of off, it would be the Deep Woods off, the one in the green can. Uh, for those of you who think that way, I think that way. Uh, so you want you you want the high concentration of DEET, uh, and it and it really really does work. Now, ticks can attach to your pets, and actually pets can get Lyme disease. Dogs get Lyme disease, uh, and uh, uh, you know, it's it's a veterinary. Uh, vets often treat a lot of Lyme disease, but. So you want to protect your pets but for them, but you also want to protect your pets for you because they can carry ticks to you uh, as well. Uh, so as I said, you use, use products with a high concentration of DEET. Uh, I think Deep Woods Off has 30% or so, which is, which is good. Uh, and, uh, you know, just be judicious with its use. Don't, don't uh, it says use it sparingly, but, you know, but really spray. Really spray yourself. Uh, it says to use on clothing when possible instead of skin, but I, I use it on both. Uh, you know, particularly if, uh, if you know you're going into the woods, if you're going on a hike, or if you're clearing bush uh, from the, the edge of your property. Uh, and if you know there are a lot of deer in your area, you know, pe people know their property by, uh, after living there for a while. Uh, and, uh, uh, and then, you know, common sense, when you return indoors, when you're done for the day, just take a shower. 
Tick checks, also very important. Upon returning indoors, and this is particularly, it's true for everybody, but it's particularly true for kids, because kids do what kids do. You know, you can only control their, uh, their movements and their activities so much. So when they come in, you, 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 you know, get them undressed and inspect them. Give them a quick once over. Check their hair. Uh, check your hair, your scalp, because the, the ticks can get in there. They can attach to the scalp. And you might not know it. Uh, and, and, you know, in the body folds, underarms, and in, in the, in the groin areas. And, and remove the ticks as soon, as soon as you can. So that brings us to tick removal. Do not use a lot of the things that uh, you've been told to do. And that would be to use Vaseline to snuff them out, supposedly, hot match heads to burn them off, nail polish, kerosene, any other substance. It's very simple. Get, a th get tweezers, thin tip tweezers, so that you, you, you don't mangle the thing and you grasp the tick as closely as possible to the skin. Because what you want to do is you don't want to leave behind the so-called mouth parts of the tick, because that's where the saliva is and that's where the infection is going to come. So the technique is to, to grasp the tick as this cartoon shows and to pull straight upward. Uh, do not tug or twist. Pull straight upward with a steady pressure. Uh, it's, it's better if you, if, if, if you can to have someone else do it other than you because they have more control uh, if, you have the, if you have the option of having a, some, someone who's at the house help you. And then wash and disinfect the bite area. Uh, it's, it's really a good idea to uh, to, to write down uh, the date and location of the tick bite, and, and, e and even to save the tick, to put it in a container and to, and to bring it in if you go see the doctor. Uh, uh, if, uh, particularly if you have any doubt about what kind of tick it is. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a good idea to, to save it and bring it in. Um, things you can do for the yard. You probably know a lot of this. Uh, the, the more manicured your lawn is, the less likely you're going to have uh, a lot of ticks. Uh, to, you know, keep leaves and brush to a minimum, uh, reduce the ground cover, uh, bird feeders, uh, because birds can bring the ticks to you, so bird feeders near the house uh, can, can be a, a problem as well. Uh, Mouse nesting sites, so anything that attracts rodents are going to attract ticks. Uh, and, uh, and, and those you want as far away from the house uh, as possible. And here they just show some examples uh, of, of a wood pile. Uh, obviously a place would be very inviting for small rodents. Swing sets, picnic tables, and, and uh, uh, surround with mulch, if you can. Uh, surrounding with mulch uh, does tend to uh, uh, discourage the, uh, the rodents from uh, setting up shop. It's recommended to create a, a barrier of about three feet uh, to reduce the ticks coming onto the lawn <coughs> and creating a, a, a tick uh, safety zone. And you can see here that uh, if you that that you can prevent uh, over 80 percent with a, a one to three meter uh, zone. So one meter is about three feet. Uh, you get a little extra bang for your buck if you go a little a little further. But you can prevent over two thirds with uh, with about a three foot uh, barrier. There's some examples of landscape modification you can do, and you can see in the before it's pretty, uh, pretty wild. Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of these are just obvious.
try not to have a lot of ground cover right near the house. Um, ivy and, and, and uh, uh, climbing or clinging vine type uh, plants near the house uh, often will, will, attract, uh, will, will attract the ticks. Uh, and then, you know, be smart about the kind of uh, plantings that you, uh, that you do. Uh, I'm not an expert in this by any means, but there are uh, deer-resistant plantings that you can, you can put in. You can put in plantings that the deer uh, like less. You know, when the deer are hungry, uh, particularly in the winter, uh, if, if you have deer on your property, they'll eat anything. Uh, but uh, uh, in, in, uh, uh, you, you, can, you can mitigate this by using so-called deer-resistant plants, and here's a list uh, of deer-resistant plants, but you're, you, you, know, you can look this up or your landscaper or whoever helps you. Uh, if you have a, a landscaper, an arborist can help you with, with these, these sorts of things. These are so-called deer-resistant plants. Uh, If the deer are hungry, they'll eat anything, is, 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 as you know, and is really the reality. I mean, they say they don't like evergreens and all kinds of stuff, but you, you see them eating, uh, in the winter especially, whatever they can. So, tick-borne uh, disease prevention checklist. Uh, obviously, prevent tick bites with... Uh, with spray, do daily tick checks, uh, and then uh, know, know all the symptoms of tick-borne diseases, uh, re learn to recognize the rash, and modify your yard uh, as necessary. Uh, bushwhacking is often associated when hiking with, uh, with, with exposure. You know, when you go, when you go through, uh, when you go off trail and and, and take and take a, take a uh, uh, you can, you know go through and, w and whack the bush get it, uh, get it get it down as you walk through uh, that's that's high risk tall grass uh, and then the transition area between the lawn and the woodland edge is is where they come in there have been a lot of outbreaks of Lyme disease uh, in places that used to be um, it used to be fields, woodland uh, fields that get cleared and, and, and when, where developments are built, particularly developments that, uh, housing developments that have golf courses associated with them. So you, have, you build a housing development that in a place that used to be woods and put a golf course there, it's a perfect recipe uh, because the golf course often abuts onto where the woodland uh, uh, remnant restarts, and, and you 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 see a lot of Lyme disease in those in those areas. So, don't hesitate to call your doctor. Seek early diagnosis and treatment, um, and uh, uh, your your doctor may test you for several of the tick-borne diseases to make an accurate diagnosis and to take and to take the medication. Uh, Ticks are most active in the spring and summer, as, as we know, but you can find, I've found, I've had cases of Lyme disease in December. Uh, uh, ticks can stain clothing, uh, and, uh, and it, it, it happens. It's an all year round thing, but mostly around starting now through the summer. How about pets? Uh, they get they get fever too, they get arthritis too, uh, and uh, and you know everyone knows when their pet is in pain and is not not moving normally, uh, and then uh, is not eating well. Uh, here are some uh, couple of websites: one from New York State, and another from the CDC, uh, having to do with Lyme disease, uh, for uh, that you may want to, uh, um, that you may want to consult. Uh, here's a funny cartoon. Uh, 
We're thinking of moving to another part of the country, somewhere between Lyme disease and killer bees. So uh, uh, that's, uh, that's it. Uh, so for, for treatment, what about treatment? So there are two, two things I'll say ab about, about treatment. Number one, there is prophylaxis. Now, there, the, the, med the main medicine that's given for Lyme disease is, is a oral medicine called doxycycline. It's a tetracycline kind of antibiotic that's, that's given, um, that's readily available. Now, one of the most common questions uh, I get during tick season, uh, now and through the summer, I got bitten by a tick. Should I take medicine now or should I wait to see what happens? So that's a very good question. The, uh, we, we, we know that on Long Island, uh, at least half the ticks, maybe even more in some parts like Shelter Island and on the East End, uh, are infected with the bacteria that causes Lyme disease. So even though it's not a hard recommendation, it's an optional recommendation uh, by the public health authorities, I always give uh, prophylactic treatment with doxycycline, two doses of doxycycline uh, uh, to, to protect. And that's been shown uh, when you've been bitten by a tick that, ha that harbors the Lyme disease bacteria, it will prevent then the development of Lyme disease. Two doses of doxycycline. The treatment for Lyme disease, so if you get that rash or any of the other manifestations, the treatment for Lyme disease is two to three weeks of doxycycline. Uh, so uh, I, I, I'm a big supporter of, uh, of the two-dose prophylaxis for anyone who gets a tick bite, particularly in our region. Uh, I, I, and, and, and that's an option. So that's a reason why you should, if you get a tick bite, immediately uh, call your doctor, go to an urgent care center. Uh, uh, that's, uh, that, that's, and we, at Winthrop, we have an urgent care center right at the, right at the Mineola rail, Railroad Station, uh, and I, I will get it taken care of. Um, so I'll stop there and open it for questions and discussion. Thank you. Yes? Can you put alcohol on the tick so that it smothers it? So the smothering, the smothering thing doesn't work, really. It's, not, it's not effective at preventing what you want to do, so, so the, the rule of thumb is that a tick needs to have attached for about 36 hours uh, to transmit these diseases. So, uh, so it's, and that's why, the, that's why the tick check is so important. So you can, you know, if you, if you, if you find the tick bite very early, the chances of getting one of these diseases drops dramatically. So by smothering the tick and not removing the tick, you, you're not really smothering, the, you're not getting rid. No, you get you're not, rid of it after you, you put alcohol on it. Well, it's got to detach and its mouth parts have to detach, which doesn't always, doesn't always happen. It, it, it's, it's, it's the mouth parts of the, of, the, uh, of the tick that are critical because that's where the salivary glands are that's where the highest concentration of the, uh, of the infection, infectious agents are that are then going into you. The, really the, the best uh, way to go about it is to remove the tick the way, the way I described. That's the most effective way. Yes? Excuse me, can you have your lawns um, professionally sprayed? Yes, you can. Does that help keep them down? Uh, that keeps, uh, yes. Uh, so you can have you can have your yard you can have everything uh, treated for uh, for deer. I mean it's very common. Uh, there are landscaping services that uh, in the spring around now will you know uh, will uh, will treat all of your uh, plants and uh, and bushes and trees with uh, with deer repellent. 
uh, yeah, the other services do that. Recommended. I I think if you if you I you know I think if you've got if you know you've got a lot of deer, uh, I mean I I I've, I've got I've got a so I do it. I have a house on the east end. Uh, well, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I have a house on the east end, and I just had my whole yard treated. Uh, you know, I do it as part of the spring cleanup. I have a, you know, I have a regular, the regular guy who comes and, yeah. and does my lawn. I have him come in the spring and clean up all the stuff that right. from the winter, and uh, do a a uh, a deer a deer treatment as well. It's pretty pretty standard. Okay. Yeah, Thank yeah. You. So there, there, there's testing that can be done. So for Lyme, very important point is that the blood test, which detects antibodies, meaning that you've been exposed and your body is reacting to the, to the infection, that may not turn positive in most cases for a few weeks. Uh, so in about two-thirds of cases, of real early Lyme disease, that test will be negative. So the, so the official recommendation for doctors is you don't do that, you don't rely upon that test at the beginning. Uh, that test is more reliable for later disease. Mean, if it's positive, that means that you have been exposed to the Lyme disease bacteria and you may have it in you if you haven't been treated. So we just treat. Uh, the, 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 the official medical recommendation is to treat if you suspect Lyme disease. Uh, so if you have the rash, if you had a tick bite, if you, if, if you have a syndrome that's compatible with Lyme disease, you can test, but you shouldn't delay treatment. That's, that's the point. Uh, as far as the other infections are concerned, babesiosis is parasitic disease. Is, it, it can be very severe. It's a diagnosable um, with a blood smear, similar to what you would do with malaria. Uh, it's in the same category as malaria. It's a parasite of red blood cells. People can get quite sick, particularly people who have lost their spleen for whatever reason, either through trauma or through, through, through another disease. Um, and, uh, and it can be very serious. Ehrlichiosis, er, 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 uh, um, HGC, human granulocytic, uh, HGA, human granulocytic anaplasmosis is also a blood test that can be, that can be employed. Fortunately, doxycycline is part of the treatment for all of those diseases. So um, that's, that's, that's a, luck, a lucky thing for us uh, so that the same medicine can be used to treat all of those diseases. Babesiosis is a little more complicated. Um, and, uh, but, but in that case, you actually see the parasite uh, on a blood smear uh, from a finger stick. Yes, sir? Is it the same for uh, the kids? Like my son has a tick on him, and I went to, you know, this doctor, the pediatrician, and they said they wouldn't treat him until three weeks later they wanted to do, a, you know, three, in three weeks they wanted to do a blood test, and it's been a week and a half so far. In the interim, I found a tick on me and took it off. And I brought it to the doctor and he started me on antibiotics right away. And I just got the results back saying that that tick was Lyme, was carrying Lyme. And I called the pediatrician. And again, he said he still wanted to wait that time period to test them. Now if he shows a positive, is it treatable? I mean, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Is, is he still, is he, is he sick? No, I haven't yeah, seen it. Yeah. It's been a week and a half. I haven't yeah. seen it. So he, yes, it's still treatable and you would treat it the same way? Uh, for how old is your? He's 15. Yeah. So for kids, uh, uh, for kids it can be a little different. 15 is 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 fine. I it's mean, the cool. thing you worry about with with doxycycline, it's a tetracycline, and it can, it, you know, if if the teeth aren't the adult permanent teeth yet, it can it can cause a discoloration of um, of the teeth because it gets into the it gets in there. Right. So you want to avoid tetracycline. <laughs> In the little, real little ones, but 15 is almost uh, uh, an adult. So, so he should be 
he, if he comes back positive, for sure he should be treated. But, but was the blood test taken immediately? Yeah, they won't do it. No, what, what? Oh, okay. That's well, that's what, what I was saying. So yeah. it usually doesn't come positive till three weeks. So, I mean, that's, that's one approach. Um, I think if it's a deer tick, uh, oh, sure. if it's a deer we tick on state. long, if it's a, where were you? Valley yeah. and well, that's another, that's another area. So a deer tick in an area with very high yeah. Lyme disease prevalence. Well, and you already know that you were together and yours was positive. I mean, that, if it were me, I would treat your, your, your I would treat your son. So, so I, I would, you know, doxycycline, by the way, is not the only medicine that can be used. It's the most common medicine, it's the recommended medicine, it's the one where we have the most experience. If there's a reason not to use it, there are other antibiotics that can be, that can be used uh, as well that are easily available and are, can be taken orally. So, uh, and sometimes in pediatrics you may, you may give a different medicine. But the scenario you're describing to me, uh, I think uh, to me it would be pretty clear cut what I would do. I, I certainly would treat you. You have more information than most people ever get, actually, from their exposure. Uh, you saw the tick, you had the tick, the tick was positive. Um, you're, you're, it's a gift. It's, you're lucky to get that much information most of the time. Yes, ma'am. What if you continue to be sick after you had Tracy? I thought it took 10 years to be diagnosed and about 15 doctors. And so I didn't treat uh, well, you, 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 haven't got, you haven't gotten the right doctor, uh, unfortunately. The do very, very doctors, including at Winthrop. Really? And now I'm in Manhattan at Columbia and I'm much happier. Okay. They've diagnosed as lupus, rupus, rheumatoid arthritis. Did you, did you ever see an infectious disease doctor at Winthrop? Oh, yeah. at, at Winthrop? Yeah. Okay. We, we can talk. We can talk later. But uh, uh, um, you know that 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 shouldn't be. I don't I don't know the details uh, of the, of this particular case. But uh, there seems to be some question now that you said the three weeks after you get exposed that you show that she only tested positive the same. One band, not three bands. CDC. Oh, 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 well, that's a different, t so, so uh, I'll back up for a minute. The, te the most common test that's done is, is a screening test, just testing for antibody, and then there's a, there's a you're, you're talking about the immunoblot test, which is a, a, uh, a secondary test uh, that actually shows um, the react, the, it shows the presence of, antibodies in your blood that correspond to specific proteins on the Lyme disease bacteria. It, it, it's, it's a more, uh, it's a confirmatory and, and, and more definite test if there's any doubt. Now, uh, in order for that test to be positive, you're supposed to have the correct number of bands, the correct number of reactions to the Lyme disease proteins. Now, I don't know in this case whether uh, those reactions were all, whether the requisite number of reactions were all there. Uh, um, or, or not, but. Yeah, but that's probably not a positive test for Lyme disease. Uh, that's not considered a positive test it's for not Lyme disease. Well, well, it's you know, it's 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 not it's not considered positive. You can't consider that a positive test. Um, but we can talk later about your specific situation if you want. Yes, sir. What's the timeline that it takes to get forged like the sample you had on the screen there? Uh, usually, usually within 36 hours or so. You mean for the tick to get big like that? To get big effect, yeah. Yeah, 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 24 to 36 hours after attachment. Oh, so it's not, it's not in a quicker period of time than... Oh, well, it's not like the tick attaches and then, you know, blows up like a jiffy pop. Uh, 
balloon on your uh, uh, stove. Hey, we've had a lot of experience with um, with ticks upstate, usually a dark colored tick, and this in this past week with the East Meadow, uh, no deer, and uh, we found ticks twice this week, and one fat like that I actually brought in because it looked blonde to me in color, didn't know but what it had. Kind it was. Yeah, but it looked fat. It looked fat like that on you, or it looked fat like that when you found it. Yeah. Oh well, you don't. Do you know how long it'd been on the dog? I checked the dog constantly. That's uh, that's, that's why, why we're it. asking the time frame. Well, you know, I, it, it can be anywhere from, from it can be anywhere up to thirty six hours. That's because it, it looks blonde. It doesn't look. It looked black. blonde, but now it looks purple like your picture. So, you know, after two days of being dead. So, you know. Yeah. Um, so did you take the dog in? No. Where's she the front line. The tick was dead. <clears throat> it was dead in She's her She's got car. front line on. Oh, okay. So, so since we don't have deer, um, we can then make the assumption that it's either mice, rats, the rabbits that are running all over right. the place, or the birds. Absolutely. Okay, and can all three of those varieties of ticks carry the Lyme disease, or is it only the deer tick? The deer tick is the one that carries Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. The other ones carry other things. Okay, they all uh, carry something. They all carry something. Uh, you know, one, one of the ticks carries Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, uh, uh, which is a, which is a separate uh, issue, but uh, but it's the deer tick uh, with Lyme disease. But it sounds like that's what you're describing. What you're describing is a deer tick. We we have a place upstate, and we are constantly taking ticks off. I've taken it off him. He's taken it off me. I've taken it off the dogs. Right. We've never been tested. Never went to the doctor. I guess we've been locked. And you never, yeah. and you never been, yeah. you never we, been. We check ourselves pretty. Yeah. Well, that is. So that's the. That's the ideal scenario. That's, That's why I was so shocked when I found this one because I have a, a, a special comb for the dog and I was shocked. So, no. all right. Yes, sir. Um, with clothes, as you take them off, should they go in the dryer right away? Or you hold off to them in a bag and then put them in the wash? Well, you can look at your clothes and see if there are any ticks on them. I mean, uh, there's nothing wrong. But you put them in the wash, it's going to kill the ticks, that's for sure. I mean, they, uh, they're not going to survive the, the detergent. Well, no, but it's not going to survive the detergent that you're going to use in there. Uh, they, they shouldn't survive the detergent, that's for sure. Uh, and, and then you're going to dry them anyway after that. Uh, but... Uh, I don't, I don't think put, taking your clothes off and putting them in the dryer, uh, you, you can see on your clothes, you shake them out, you look at them, whether, you, whether you've got ticks or not. I, I, I wouldn't go crazy as a routine matter, putting your clothes in the dryer as a way to potentially get rid of ticks. Uh, use your eyes, wash your clothes, use detergent. Uh, that, that should take care of it. Yes. So uh, the antibodies uh, to the Lyme disease bacteria typically persist for years. Uh, you would get a positive test. All that tells you is that you've been exposed in the past. If you've been treated, you can get reinfected as well. Those antibodies will wane over several years, 10 to 20 years, it's unusual to see uh, one exposure result in a positive test going out decades, uh, unlike other diseases. Uh, so you would have to assume that it was a new infection or a reinfection at some point, which is not far-fetched. People get infected multiple times during their lives if they're exposed. So you can get it more than once. You can get Lyme disease more than once. Yes. The, uh, the treatment of the antibiotics that you take, is that 100% effective? <laughs> is anything 100% effective? Uh, I had Lyme and I took the treatment. And um, I was told there's no follow-up. You don't come back. Right. You, know, okay. so you just have to assume that you're feeling okay. But I, I wonder because usually I've developed really bad arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and I sometimes wonder if there's a connection. So rheumatoid arthritis is a condition. I mean, it's, it's a...
diagnosable condition with its own set of blood tests, as you know, uh, and uh, it, it is not a Lyme disease associated phenomenon. Uh, Any room for diseases? Because she actually doesn't test. I don't know. I'm seronegative. I test negative. Yeah, there are seronegative. There's seronegative rheumatoid arthritis. So the type of arthritis that Lyme disease causes is not typical rheumatoid arthritis. There, if you're seeing a rheumatologist, I assume, yeah. The the joint exam of a rheumatoid arthritis patient is distinct uh, from an osteoarthritis patient and and from a Lyme disease patient. Uh, the the Lyme disease the the main joints involved are large joints like like the knees in particular. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis can affect any joint, but it's often uh, affecting uh, distal joints, meaning dist joints that are uh, like the hand joints uh, or the foot or the feet. Uh, it's less common. You're going to tell me you have it of, of the of large joints. Uh, so uh, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. It's, there's nothing in medicine that's 100%. Uh, uh, it, would be, it would be very unusual. Certainly the doxycycline is 100% effective at killing the, the Lyme bacteria. That I can tell you. There are inflammatory diseases that may occur as part of Lyme disease, uh, particularly Lyme disease that's not treated when it's primary infection, uh, which doesn't sound like it's your case, um, that uh, that 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 may occur. But so I don't I don't I don't have a perfect answer for you. Uh, but if you were treated when you had a erythema migrans rash. And you were treated with the right medicine for the right length of time. It, it's 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 really uh, um, very unlikely that uh, years later your your arthritis is uh, is due to uh, due to Lyme. Okay. Yes. Is there any research being done for inoculation against this this Lyme disease? Yes, there there are there are there is research being done on. In, in, into vaccines. For the uh, vaccine, yeah. yeah. That would be perfect. It, it would be perfect. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it would be. Uh, but um, it's it's very it's 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 a hard one to do because uh, for 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 a number of reasons. Uh, so what you want in a vaccine is you you want a, a vaccine that will cause the person you give the vaccine to to develop uh, an immune response oh, that's right. uh, that is going to uh, kill the invading bacteria before it causes disease. Uh, that's the the basis of, of a vaccine, and we we understand very poorly the immunity. Uh, aspects of Lyme disease. So for instance, the antibodies that we make against Lyme disease, uh, showing that we've been exposed by the antibody tests we do, whether it's the screening antibody test or the immunoblot test that, that we were talking about before, those are not protective against Lyme disease. In other words, uh, the, the antibodies don't are not protective. You can diagnose the disease, but if you were to isolate those antibodies and give them as an infusion, for instance, those those are not uh, highly protective against Lyme disease. Uh, so we 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 don't know uh, a lot about the immunity to Lyme to Lyme disease. Uh, the, the hope is that, I'm, I don't work in, in that field as, as part of my research, but uh, uh, it, the, the hope is, is that we will develop a Lyme disease uh, uh, vaccine that's, it's, it's the, there, there's a lot of work going on uh, on it. Thank you. Yep. Sir. If you bring a ticket in the house on the clothes and it falls off, 
Do you know how long that could survive in the house before it attaches to you or a pet? I don't know, but it can survive a long time. Without attaching? Yeah, yeah without attaching. Uh, I mean, that's the thing, close people, people, uh, you know, I've had cases where people take off a shirt, you know, they wore it maybe a month ago, they, they get the shirt back and they find a tick inside the shirt and it's alive. So, you know, it, 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 it can happen. They're hardy, hardy creatures. All right, well, I thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you.